time to open up another can of worms. Yeah. So, I, and and I, to be fair, I think this can is already a bit half open. It is open. <laughs> Indeed. This can is already open. Good morning. It's a very rainy day outside and we're up here on the boat. Project time! Getting ready to start another yes. very big project because the decks are, are wrapping up. In the last episode, we made the big move of finally closing up our side decks. After months of open deck surgery, replacing deck beams and blocking, this feels like the end to a big chapter. But now there's another chapter to open up and that is the cockpit. <laughs> All right, so time for some more destruction. Exactly. I would like to maximize storage. You can see many cutouts now, but actually we only had these two lockers uh, when we got the boat. There was one here on port with two propane bottles and that filled it. And then there is one here, which houses about four fenders and that's it. Another big reason is there had been many repairs in the past. So instead of having a deck comprised of 20 puzzle pieces, we'd like to rebuild it with as large pieces as possible for structural integrity, stiffness, strength, um, and all of that. So yeah, those are big reasons. But also the design changes that we have in mind is to actually make the cockpit wall a bit smaller. Not only for seaworthiness reason, uh, we think uh, this boat is pretty badass um, from the get-go, but the reason we want to do it is because we feel it still is comfortable enough, the storage becomes a lot more accessible and um, yeah, a lot more volume. And then many of you might remember, because we've talked about this before, we were thinking of changing the combing. You can see the old combing uh, hanging right here. And we are thinking of actually having the sides come to about here, but then flare out. So this would be an open aft deck afterwards, this entire area, which I am super excited about. As with any boat project, there's a lot to do. So then, time for more destruction. <laughs> Oh, it's such a disaster in this area here. Uh, many repairs have been done. So I was just determining if uh, it's worth going carefully or if I just cut it all up. This one here is an original beam, but it has rotted, so it has been cut flush and it's not doing anything. And instead it has been replaced with this beam, which is not bolted to the beam shelf though, and something must have not been right with the height, so they put a shimmy underneath. So this is how this is made right now. Yeah, and personally I don't like wooden gutters either, so I'm just gonna redo the whole thing. Such a beast of a tool! <laughs> it is fun, it is fun. I hope you've enjoyed it, Aladino. Uh, very quick to demolish and uh, takes a long time to redo. <laughs> <laughs> So, in a way, it almost looks better now, in a strange way, just because before there was like all this plywood that was chopped up hap haphazardly and stuff, and at least now we can see the beams, we can see the structure of it. 
we can see the rot. And we can see the rot. <laughs> There's not too much rot. It was mostly over here in the back. Yeah, this beam here is bad. Um, this one here is bad. Oh yeah, that's quite bad, hey? So general plan is we will reuse the beams on this side. They're in decent enough condition. And over here, this is going to get some more serious work. Another thing that I wanted to point out is um, I've peeled the glass off. Z zero adhesion uh, from fiberglass to wood here. Mm -hmm. um, I assume it was polyester. Now, there is a way that you can make polyester stick a lot better also to wood. And that is by using a primer. Uh, for example, one of them is called Primex. But instead this side here, this is where the cockpit has been repaired previously. Um, I personally have never used vin vinyl ester, so I don't know how that sticks to wood, but it could also be epoxy. I know that that sticks to wood. So instead, when I try to peel off the fiberglass here, the plywood comes with it. Mm -hmm. So you can see that um, that gives a much, much better adhesion. Sweatier job than I thought. I am trying to separate the bulkhead from that beam and that is because if I can save it I can reuse it in a different spot. Now granted it is the rotting one but it is rotten at this end here and instead if I can only use from the very end to the middle then I could maybe reuse it uh, here for this locker because it will be long enough. Just trying to work smart uh, not just ripping apart as it seems. A little bit of the bulkhead came with it. That's because I wanted to do so instead of um, cutting the beam. Oh, I did that too. But yeah, I'll run it under the planer, thickness planer. I would be really happy if I can save some work from having one beam made. This is super awesome. What are you doing? A little bit of uh, cockpit design. So luckily I found a third uh, laying around on the property. Aladino wanted to try fitting the propane bottles in place to see how big he needed to make the locker. Propane is used safely on millions of boats worldwide, but in order for it to be safe, there are some specific things you need to do, and having a dedicated propane locker that vents directly outboard is one of them. Aladino also wanted that locker to be as close to the stove as possible to minimize the length of hose connecting stove and bottle. With a rough idea of how big he needs to make the propane locker, Aladino continued with demolition. This aft bulkhead is actually going to get moved forward to shorten the cockpit well and increase storage in the aft lockers. Till my days are done, I'll never let go. You're the fire inside my blood, burn the bad and leave the good in my
Meanwhile, inside the boat, I had a project on the go. After already finding several instances of rot in our balsa insulation, I felt really uncomfortable with having any uninspected balsa left in our hull. We had debated whether or not to go to the trouble of removing this chest of drawers to get at the balsa behind, but ultimately decided we should. I didn't want to have to live with the questions later on. I had to carefully disassemble the drawers so as not to break them, something that can be quite difficult on a boat where pieces are often epoxied in place and screw heads are covered in sealant. No thanks to the camera's autofocus here, but I did manage to remove the fiberglass and determined that there was actually no rot in the balsa. But oh well, at least now we knew, so I could proceed with grinding the area and getting it ready for new glass. All right, it's happening. Dini is making me a grinding shelter. Okay, Dean, are you gonna teach me how to use an angle grinder? Yeah, actually it's a lot easier since I bought the, the dust shroud, because um, then it, cannot really do all the hazardous things that it does. Good. I don't like hazardous things. The grinder is very hazardous. Oh no. Yes. Alright, I'm going into the abyss. I'm going to Mars. No camera can follow me here. Welcome to Maya's first grinding experiment. The dust has settled, it's all been vacuumed up. Come have a look. It, uh, it went okay. I mean, I definitely like dug in with the grinder a few times, so it's not as perfect as when Aladino does it, but for my first time, I think it went fine. You did really well. Yeah. And the dust shroud really helps a lot. That's a game yeah. changer too, because it totally. doesn't kick back or you don't really have to know what angle to hold it in. This is coming along pretty nicely. As you can see, the bulkhead is out of the way now and my visions become a bit clearer. And for now I'll just be fiddling with little tasks, uh, remove these plywood uh, backing plates. I still have to cut back a little bit of the locker here, just for uh, preparation to start fitting in the new bulkhead. That will be the, new, the, the next task pretty soon here.
It's so rainy outside today that I can't get my shot because, or my normal shot of the shed, because I don't want to hold my camera in the rain. But hey, Dini. It's often here. So we have. I'm myself. <laughs> so here's the new Carlin. Let's go see. Oh, are you filming that on the GoPro? Oh, yeah. Oh, I see. Okay, we've got a new Carlin. <laughs> this is going to be funny to edit. that and you might remember this one what are you thinking of you know <laughs> people are so invested in following our story that they don't remember a silly beam <laughs> i remember this one <laughs> So this one was um, the old original beam of the bridge deck, which is what Maya is standing on at the moment. But since we were able to get this one out in one piece, we made a new one using this one as a template, which means we have this one left over now. The problem though is rot was setting in on the ends. Yes. But if we move it aft now, the boat becomes very narrow. That means we were able to cut off the ends, which were rotten. Now you see beautifully perfect, nice wood. Mm -hmm. And I still have to cut it a little further. This is just dry fitting to get it closer and closer. So I'm stoked, of course. Uh, no more curved beams need to be made. This yeah. is super exciting. I think that's a great idea. Repurpose the old beam, remove the rot, and it fits perfectly. Yeah, I love it. Also show you what I was working on yesterday. It's not terribly exciting, which is why I didn't film it, because I had the cameras on Aladino, but... Um, I was just sanding in here and here. This was new fiberglass that we put on that hadn't been sanded down yet. And then there was paint there, there was paint there. Now it's all gone. So this is ready for primer and um, Today, I'm gonna to try and move this section into getting fiberglassed and, well, primer, I guess, and paint, but I'll then put the drawers back together. These drawers are not a work of art, like they were constructed with really crude methods, but they do work, and it's just not the priority right now to be focusing on fine furniture. So that's gonna be a future project in some pretty port of call somewhere. Yeah got to draw the line somewhere. So today, a little bit more prep work and then hopefully put some fiberglass in. I'm not sure if I'll film it because I think I'm going to put all the cameras on Aladino today. And you guys have seen us fiberglass that damn balsa before. Check it out. These what? were the ends oh. of that beam. Yeah. And you can see there were repairs made, done to it. And rot. And there yeah. was rot, which travels further, as we know. But yeah perfectly good here. Yeah. So that's nice. Good, good. From these thin pieces of door skin, our new bulkhead was about to take shape. A little bit of crabby pressure. <laughs> Oh. The whole thing on the image? Yeah. Now that shows you guys 
um, what made me fall in love uh, with, with the lines of this boat. Look at those beautiful sections. That is really gorgeous. It's really nice. Incredible. Good so, job, Aladino. Just hot glue and thin thank you. wood. Yeah. There's, there's, many, there's many ways to template um, things. Another one is with the tickling stick method. What? <laughs> yeah, it's a funny term. <laughs> And as for everything, I'm not always sure on the English uh, version for um, what things are called. Imagine like a mixing stick. Yeah. Yeah, like this. Yeah. Anything. It just has to have a unique shape to it. Mm -hmm. I attach a piece of cardboard firmly here and then I take my stick and then I have to trace it. And then I trace it here. In the, I put it in the right corner. I trace again, and then I do one up here, I trace again, I do one here, I trace again. And then if you bring that piece to your work table onto the, the bulkhead or whatever it is you're making, you put the piece of cardboard down. You just have to put the tickle stick in the positions that you marked again, you do put a dot here, put a dot here, put a dot here, and then you connect the dots. Mm -hmm. And then it's basically recreating the dots you were fishing hmm. previously. Yeah. I like your method, it looks cooler. Nice, thank you. With this beautiful template made, Aladino could then trace the outline directly over a piece of marine ply and then cut it out with a jigsaw. Then, voila, a new bulkhead will be born. Well, I'm running, I'm running like my hands on fire, and I don't intend to stop even when my legs grow tired. And yes, I'm stumbling, I'm stumbling on my peace of mind. There's regret in my soul that I feel not been by. As I said, I don't expect it to fit. Pass. We follow pirate chip tradition and we go with a raised poop deck. Do you remember the kocha? It's getting late in the day, you know what, maybe... <laughs> <laughs> Here there will be a tower for lookout. Remember the tower? Uh, yeah, maybe we shouldn't do any more work today. I finally got the bulkhead in there. It took quite a few uh, tries. I had to trim the edges quite a few times until I was able to fit it. Look All at that! Right. And those perfect little cutouts there. I didn't see those before. Those are new. Oh, are they? Yeah. Been cool. Here in a while then. Well, yes. So everyone, thank you so much for being here. As always, it was a real pleasure to film and produce this episode for you all. Thanks so much for the really positive comments and all the uplifting ideas and support. Uh, we do read everything that you re write to us, even if we don't respond. Uh, we really appreciate all the kind words. A huge thank you to you guys for watching. An extra big thanks to our patrons who make this whole episode possible. We really, really wouldn't be doing it without you guys, so in a very tangible, real way you guys are making this project happen, so thank you so much. If you'd like to become a patron, you can do so for as little as $2 a month. 
And there's also behind the scenes stuff, real time updates every Tuesday and um, a lot more one on one communication. If you have specific questions for Dini and I, I do respond on Patreon, even if I don't respond always everywhere else. Uh, extra big thanks to the folks whose names are now appearing on screen. These guys really go the extra mile to make sure that Magic Carpet keeps being produced every week. We'll see you all in the next episode. Thanks. Bye.